Gemstone Caverns. I'm like, I thought that Kibler was going one. first. What's going on? Why is, uh, oh, Gemstone Caverns. He just, he just hijacked the play. All right. well, he did. He has to remove fire spots from the game, but he gets oh, to start the game with. Uh, well, here's my turn one play. Strip mine, yeah. Oh. It's really strange to go first and strip by your opponent immediately. Crazy. Okay. Yeah, it's a ghost quarters. Kibler brought in those four ghost quarters. I mean, They're I running four ghost quarters. I'm surprised that uh, Evangelist wouldn't have at least one like basic there. land that basic he could, land to go get. could go get with his... Uh, he has to know this path to exiles. He has to feel like there's ghost quarters just because of the, uh, you know, hype around the Dark Depths now. <laughs> it's true. Right? Ghost quarter is here. Uh, in, in Brian's sideboard for the Dark Depths matchup. Right. Because that deck cannot go off in the face of a Ghost Quarter. Right. Or in the face of an active Knight of the Reliquary in a deck that has Ghost Quarter. Go ahead. Yep. We see All right. a wild so, Nicotle. Yeah, Nicotle comes two. out for Kibler. Nice. Three. Van plays another land. Am I dead? Asks, am I dead? Oh. He can. He can Violent Outburst this turn. Does he want to wait and draw another card? Can you see his hand? Yeah, he has a uh, Simeon Spirit Guide, a Violent Outburst, mm -hmm. a Bogart and Hellkite. Okay. So, so he could Hypergenesis for one Hellkite here, but chooses not to. Right. He knows Brian doesn't have a lot of cards in hand. He's probably not worried about Brian's hyper, you know, response to Hypergenesis. <laughs> I mean, maybe not. Too much, but I think he wants, uh, he wants to see if he can draw a Progenitus, see if he can draw a Retachroma, mm -hmm. something else. Take three. Basic Mountain and yep. second Nacatl for Kibler. <laughs> so the land came off the top for Van, so he still has the ability to get Resolve Hypergenesis, but all he'll get is a Hellkite. He doesn't think that's good enough, so he's choosing to, to so he wait have, and try to draw more. Uh, those, those, are, those are storage lands. Violent Outburst. Ah, Palo Vitor. Up two games to zero now. Uses engineered explosives to clear away the spectral procession tokens. That get in there for twenty with his avatar. Oh. Meanwhile, Yuza put enough pressure on to take game two versus Shimizu. That one is tied at one game apiece. Kibler smashing with Nicodles here. He didn't get the. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's Blood Moon. There's the Blood Moon that Kibler has been so interested in. Okay. Uh, spirit. Yep. He responds with a violent outburst. Oh, funny. Two cards? Goes off as a response. Okay. Only one? It's a Hellkite. A Hellkite. A Hellkite is pretty good. Oh, no. No, wow. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Van can afford to wait on that because he does have the ability to go off at instant speed. So this Hellkite has to be good enough for him. Yeah, that's all he's going to get. A little bit surprised. He could have, he could have uh, gone off in mid-combat there, gotten in a block. I don't know if he realizes how much burn Kibler's taken out of his deck, but it's actually a lot safer to block Nakatl after sideboarding than it was before. There's very little burn left in Brian's deck. All right. Hypergenesis resolves. There's Hellkite. Okay. Um, Killing the Coddle? Weird. I think I might have gone off in mid-combat here. Yeah. Block one, shoot down the other. Hope you don't have a burn spell. Uh, that seems more, th more than reasonable to me. Uh, I mean, I, again, he doesn't know Brian Kibler's sideboard playing. We right. do. Right, right, right. It, it def it, I'm definitely affected by the fact that I know how much burn Brian took out of his deck. Like in game one, he could not afford to block. It would have been he would have lost his creatures if he'd been blocking. I mean, it's also very interesting how people approach these matches based on the quality of their playtest partners. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Brian has probably the best playtest uh, network. You know, uh, out of most people who oh, are right. make a yeah. top eight. 16, totally trying to cheat you. Fair. So what did Brian put into play? Something that got shut down by Hellkite. I didn't see what it was. Okay. Yeah. Oh, here's oh. Fire Spout. That clears the yeah, board. Yeah. That is the one spell that Van can still cast with Blood Moon in play. Now he's attacking with that one dragon. He's done. He's essentially all in on one 5-5 five, five flyer. It might be good enough, though. Treetop Village for Kibler. He needs a Baneslayer, Angel. Yeah, Baneslayer or a path. 
Go. Yes. So he needs a white source Four. and a bean slayer angel. Nope. Wow. Van takes game two. He's up 2 0 on Brian Kibler. Okay. I don't know that I was expecting this to be quite so brutal. I was going to ask you before this match started who you liked in this matchup. Uh, Van. Clearly, Kibler is just outmatched. That hypergenesis combo is amazing, right? That's what I would have said. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> you're, just, you're just ripping him out on uh, it. It's hard to. Uh, it's hard to imagine that Van could not Sometimes the combo that puts gigantic not draw him on there. one of the next three games. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Kibler's got to win three straight at this point. That seems awfully hard to do against a deck that's sort of capable of not quite a first-turn yeah, kill, but a first-turn, you know, 20 power worth I, of monsters I, I, draw. If you damaged me, then I couldn't... What? You couldn't play. Well, I, I and couldn't Kibler play. gets, uh, Kibler well, gets to play, play again, which yeah, is obviously but favorable it's also, for him. Like, it, the, it changes the but if you get, if you get the if he, guy if he wins, then Van only gets to play once. <laughs> Could be another quarterfinal exit for Brian. Brian has made back-to-back -back top eights. Two PT top eights. Yeah, I, I like to think that he's in a, a slump. Oh, he's in a slump? Yeah, he's, he's, a, slump? he's only made two top eights in the last four years. Yeah, he's made two top eights in the last two PTs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's incredible. I mean, do you, can you recall a comeback as a... Uh, Multi-year layoff this? followed by back-to-back -to -back top eights. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing's coming to mind. Yeah, I, I can't I can't recall. I mean, we, we've certainly seen... Uh, we saw John Finkel and Nikolai Herzog both make a top eight, but ne but neither neither of them had quite the layoff. We saw yeah. Camille uh, go to go to Grand Prix Brussels as eventually it was it was his one event and it was essentially his pre-release. That's true, um, but that's that's not quite the same as as going to two multi-format pro tours, right. you know, and emerging in the top eight uh, out of you know four hundred plus players both times, uh, sweeping through day one. It's true. How did you do an extended? Yeah, the thing is that I don't want to wait that long. So. Of course, yeah. I mean, you have to, you have to, I mean, obviously there, I got blood. So the you know, question you have to ask here. <laughs> you don't have any other opportunity. Is, you know, Brian Kimbler has been Hall of Fame eligible for some amount of time. Mm -hmm. And certainly the layoff. He was in the year three class. He, he, yeah, certainly the layoff has, you know, kept him out of that discussion. He had, he had one Pro Tour top eight before the layoff. Yeah, he, his career was, his Grand Prix record was more impressive than this Pro his Tour Grand Prix record. and his national. He's the Toronto win. Eight Grand Prix top eights, plus yeah, a couple of U.S. Nationals top eights. Your spirit guys love you. Yeah, there you see the graphic. Yeah. Toronto '97, Boston '02. You know, a, a good solid resume, I but mean, has not been getting a ton of Hall of Fame consideration. You, you but now, right, right, you add two more Pro Tour top eights. He's up to three now. It like starts to get into the conversation. Cer certainly a, a, a deep top eight penetration here going into, you know, the finals or, or even, you know, winning, obviously. Right, yeah, no, I think winning this Pro Tour would definitely put him in right it seems in the like he would, seems like he would be a lock for next year with a win. I don't know about a lock. I mean, we only put three people in this year, right? That's true. That's true. That you, you really need, if you don't have consensus, it's, it's very, very difficult. Right, I mean, compare that resume to Steve Mahoney Schwartz, right? Steve O's resume. I mean, if Kibler wins this Pro Tour, it's the same three top. I mean, Steve O has three Pro Tour top eights plus a win, plus more Grand Prix success than Kibler's had. Now, Kibler has, you know, maybe a little more intangibles. He he was the color. He had your seat next to me for a number sure. of years. I mean, he's certainly done a lot to contribute to the game. In I think people. I, I mean, not to not to to Steve's horn, but right. I think Steve actually gets undersold on the intangibles. I, I he was an you, international ambassador for the game. He traveled for Wizards of the Coast. To go to, he would he would say, oh, I'll go to Brazil for right, a GP well, and gunsling right. while he was actively playing. That's the, the, like this is why I said if Kibler wins this Pro Tour, sure. he's in the conversation now. But right. I don't think he makes him a lock right. because I think his resume with a win here is extremely similar to Stevo's, right. which was good almost good enough right. to get into the Hall of Fame this he, year. He but just missed by a couple percentage he missed, points. He, this year. he was fourth in the voting, missed by a couple of percentage points. <laughs> Yeah, let's take a look at uh, Van's resume as well. I think we've got a graphic that can show you his accomplishments. I think he has a top eight at oh, Grand Prix yeah. Athens. <laughs> That's a nice picture. Finished yeah. seventh at Grand Prix Athens. He, First he, Pro Tour top eight. He crushed okay. the top eight photo okay. competition. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He absolutely crushed it. That, that picture's fantastic. 
All right, and now here we are in game three. Looks like the uh, Gemstone Caverns has come down yet again mm -hmm. for Van. Uh, yeah, no, go, no ghost quarter for Brian Kibler, who's searching his deck uh, yeah. from, from a fetch land. Yeah, Van's up two games to zero, so just needs to win one of the next turn, three. Turn one Noble Hierarch. Well, that's the acceleration he needs to potentially play a Blood Moon here or a Meddling Mage. That's what Brian needs to do, because Van has queued up turn three combo. Uh, I guess, look, it's only a Hellkite, but Brian really wants to play either a Blood Moon or a Meddling Mage Basic right mountain. about now. Uh, and I think this is going to be a scoop from Evangelos. Does he have the Blood Moon? Looks like he has the Blood Moon. Although, I mean, to be fair, if he plays enough lanes, he can play a Hellkite. Sure. Yep, I got the Blood Moon. He does have the Blood Moon. All right. Well, that turns off every Cascade spell in Van's deck. All of his lands are non-basic, so he's never going to get any color other than red out of his deck now. And none of his Cascade spells are mono-red. They're all gold cards. And you have to feel if this gets to a point where he has eight of his 22 lands in play to cast a Hellkite, <laughs> uh, Bri Brian will have some answers. Yeah, yep. mathematically, it's hard cast Hellkite, hard cast Redichroma. Those are the ways that Van has, that his deck has been reduced down to like three cards. Well, <laughs> well, Brian can now start meddling mage those creatures, right? Although, interestingly, he only, he only has red mana in play right now. Yep. Although he can get white oh, or yeah, yeah, blue. White or blue off the Hierarch, yeah. but not both. And that treetop village is also just a mountain. One. He's attacking for one with his exalted hierarch. Go. Uh, another treetop, which is, again, a worse version of a mountain right now. Hey. How many lands is Van up to? Is yeah, it looks like he went straight to five. Is it so far? five? Six? <laughs> is he really going to hard cast Hellkite to win this? <laughs> Yeah, Kibler's got no action. I mean, he played it right. Huh? Clearly, you just sure. wreck him with Blood Moon. The thing is, Van's only playing 22 land. Go. He's a pretty pretty light deck in terms of total mana count. Why has Kibler stopped attacking? Did he miss an attack there? It didn't look like he attacked last turn. Oh, Kibler's got a... Oh, he wants to keep his white mana up is what he wants to do. Oh, he's got two copies of Path to Exile in his hand? Right, he wants to... Uh, oh, because yeah. you know what? If Red Chroma flips, it's got protection from the white. But right now, he's in morph range. Is that, a, that was a seventh That's land, wasn't it? Range. Yes, it was. Oh, and Nakato comes down. He's got the green off the, Go. off the Hierarch as well, so... Yeah, Hierarch's giving him green or white or blue. We're discarding. Oh, he path to exiles his own wild Nacoddle. Cute. Yeah, now he can go get a basic land. He can get a meddling mage. Goes for basic planes, I believe. Yep, basic planes. Yeah, because that does turn on meddling mage. Now he can... Is he going to meddle the Hellkite just in time? Is that what happens here? Well, he can't name a morph, so... <laughs> yeah, he can't name morph, so... Oh, oh no, he plays a Baneslayer Angel. And there's the eighth land. But protection. you know what that Baneslayer has? Protection from dragons. Protection from dragons. Unbelievable. Otherwise, Evangelos okay. would be able to shoot it down, but he can't. Crazy. Okay. He gets to kill the Hierarch and deal some damage to Kibler's face, but he can't win this Baneslayer race. Angel, he cannot win this race against Baneslayer Angel. Protection from dragons gets it done. Brian Kibler really is the Dragon Master. <laughs> Even the dragons on the other side of the table are, yeah, there's no way are he's paying gonna, attention there's to There's no him. way he's going to let a dragon kill him. Se does second dragon help here? Go, go. Nine. 16 to 9. Cracks for 5. Oh, there's Path. Okay. Path, which is just straight up. Yeah, straight up. Terror. It better source the plowshares, right? It's Exile. Baneslayer takes another chunk. Yeah, Brian's got this one. Well, he's not going to get shut out. There's another Bogart and Hellkite, but that thing just looks... <laughs> Baneslayer is pretty ridiculous. Yep, and that's... Yeah, you got it. 
pretty sure that's game. Yep, yep. There you go. Brian Kibler takes game three. So, Van... I didn't really have anything I could do, but I knew, I, like, I had nothing to I stop you. So, I was just, I got to cast my blood moon. Huh. Yeah. You heard Brian describe it his game plan there. It was awkward yep. because I couldn't actually play Hierarch, get a basic... And get, and get, you know, I had to get the you know, basic mountain because I needed, I needed red mana to cast the blood moon. I didn't, I couldn't get stomping around uh, the first turn with the, with the mana. All right, Paolo updates on the back tables. Paolo playing Sigoshi Ikeda. Ikeda has six spectral procession tokens, looking to take the first game. There, he's down two games yeah, to zero. I believe Juza and that, Shimizu are I was just hoping to get also in game three. Yep, yep, they're like still I need, I need one like and a, one. So I can pile it. Pass it. And Watanabe playing very slowly and deliberately. Oh, yeah, still yeah. game two there with Hunter Burton up a game. With the Molten Reigns. Yes, with the Molten Reigns. <sighs> Not a card you were expecting to see this weekend. No, definitely not. Well, what was the most interesting deck you saw this weekend uh, that's not in the top eight? The most interesting deck I saw this weekend that's not in the top eight, two candidates. Um, kind of the most interesting would, I mean, Conley Woods always shows up with something really interesting, and he did not disappoint here. You know, Emiria, the, what is the, the, the Sky land, Ruin? The Sky Ruin shows up with an Emiria. So essentially he's playing Martyr Proc with Emiria instead of Proclamation of Rebirth. <laughs> All right, Akeda went does win game three with the spectral procession token. So, Akeda over Paolo in game three. Paolo still got the match, or up in the match, two games to one. Yeah, uh, Conley's uh, Conley's deck was called the Markov Cocktail. We did a deck tech video on it. Very very interesting look at tons of cards you were not expecting to see in this format. Uh, you were not expecting to see Phyrexian Arena. You were certainly not expecting to see Soren Markov. Uh, yeah, it was a very interesting deck. I uh, I also really uh, I really enjoyed the the combo gifts deck that we profiled. Who's straight with you going first? Which uh, ah Martin Yuza has no Yixla pirate. Jailer in game three against Shimizu. I only three. It's kind of embarrassing. Found one of his package pieces there. <laughs> there you go. It was, uh, it was a mistake. So I don't, I don't know if you saw the combo I, gifts I, uh, deck, but it was able to, to sort of play Dark Depths so or, oh, sure, or sure. play Thopter Foundry. Right. Yeah, the, my other candidate was going to be the Thopter Foundry versus the Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meat combo. That's pretty cute. I had a lot of was running that. There were a lot of people running that. And then your combo, dick, get combo gifts deck and essentially both the Dark Depths combo and the Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meat combo shuffled into it. That was, that was definitely a nice deck that I saw. Did you actually use them that much? But I think for, uh, I think for me the most surprising thing was how much versatility people were able to get out of Zoo. You know, we, we talk about that certainly in the opening where uh, we have four different Zoo decks here. There were even more Zoo decks in contention. We had a, a dark Zoo deck that was playing from the top eight in the last round. And, uh, I mean, Zoo really feels like the new rock to me and extended in the sense that you're able to make these like kind of like fine adjustments to it based on what deck you really want to beat and what you need to deal with. All right, well, let's go check in on this other match. Paolo Vitor Damo de Rosa is really evolved into one of the true superstars of the game. The Brazilian has five Pro Tour top eights now. He's been doing well at the Grand Prix level, seems to be in contention at Worlds every year, and now he, now he's running Dark Depths. And there you get a look at Sagoshi Ikeda rocking the cowboy hat, and that is not just because we're in Austin. No, he, he had that cowboy hat when he won Nagata. Yeah. So he, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a Japanese cowboy. Absolutely. So. Also, just speaking of... Uh, you know, get a look. He did pretty well in the photo shoot competition, I, too, I think. I, I think Evangelos had him, though. It was, it was really close. It went yeah, five games. <laughs> so, Ikeda, yeah, he's in top eight, number three for his Pro Tour career. He had third at Worlds. He's got some Grand Prix. He did win the Gata very recently. And, like we said, the Spectral Zoo deck. Now, Ikeda is, uh, owns a card store in Fukuoka, Japan. So, he's a card shop manager, also a pro player. He's got over 50 Pro Tours to his credit, along with those eight assorted top eights. So, really, been around forever. Hangs out. His job is to hang out at a card store. So, he's, you know, playing magic with his customers half the day. Selling them stuff the other half today, I guess. And, and you know, some of his customers include Hall of Famer, Siyoshi Fujita. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> who, who, you know, says, this is the deck you play in this event. Yeah. Yep. I would lose, like, to anything. So. Yeah. All right. So, Thoughtseize reveals Wild Nakato, yeah, Countryside Crusher, Lightning Helix, Kasali Pride Mage, I think, and some land. 
Or is that a Knight of the Reliquary? Takes the Knight of the Reliquary. Yeah, it takes the Knight. So <laughs> Apollo leaves with Underground River Thoughtseize and takes the Knight. One, one it's of the pretty, that's not the scariest hand. Yeah. One of the things I really like about Ikeda, and yeah. I haven't watched him at a lot of, a lot of events, yeah, is he so always has a great time. He has to see the He's yeah, always he uh, just, just got tremendous humor, uh, yeah. really seems to just enjoy playing the game, and is not to say that he's not playing to win, but mm -hmm. he's, play, he's playing magic because he loves magic. Yeah, that's fair. And he just happens to be... Right. Just happens to be good enough that he can play it at the highest level for the last <laughs> like, <laughs> ten years. It's true. He's my, also Hall of Fame eligible. By yeah, the way. my favorite uh, my favorite Akita story was you asking him about the rift sweepers in his sideboard. Yeah. We're looking at the deck list last night over dinner. It's like, what does he have rift sweepers for? It's not like anybody's playing Gargadon. It's not like anybody ever actually suspends a hypergenesis. Why is he Why is he running rift sweepers? His answer: I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He's like, what? Why? Are you, how could you have a card in your deck that you don't know? And he's like, he's like, I trust Raleigh. <laughs> and Ra Raleigh's the nickname for Siyoshi Fujita. He's right. like, Raleigh said to play them, so I played them. <laughs> I trust him. And uh, he said he did bring it in. He uh, he actually brought it in and played it against a uh, ancestral visions oh, in one funny. match. Uh, I, I think it, what it sounded like, and it, it was sort of. Awkward translation. As I think he, uh, that Siyoshi was expecting Dragonstorm to be a viable deck. Oh, interesting. And so it was against uh, Lotus Blooms. So if you're at home thinking about the extended format for the next round of PTQs, huh. you know, Siyoshi Fujita was thinking about Dragonstorm. Yeah, I good to know. Going for it. All right, Ikeda leads with an Akadal off one fetch land. If I'm playing for now he cracks another one. Because it just strip mines you every turn. Yeah, not a very, uh, yeah, not a very fast I'll hand here. So Molten Rain has just looked to be, uh, how could Molten Rain be such a, such a huge difference maker? I guess the Zoo deck, which is just coming out and bashing early, just, the, it's more than destroying, the, more than doing the two damage or destroying the land, it's almost like the time mm -hmm. walk. Yeah, it's absolutely time walk. I just, I get one more turn to, to bash you with my guys and set That's you on fire. I, I, one of the, the, the staff told me, 